you know, the real benefit of protons for children is something we all know, which is that radiating young tissues is not good for them. And so we want to absolutely minimize the excess radiation that goes to tissues that don't need it in these very vulnerable patients. So even over the past five years, we've seen um, new windows opening as we've had access to pencil beam scanning on the gantry. We can do um, treatment to much more complex targets than we used to. You know, that kind of technology continues to evolve as we have better motion management, as we can do IMPT. The doors are just going to keep opening for what we can do better and better for this population. At the end of the day, we are learning more and more that the better we spare the vital organs from the side effects of therapy, the greater the likelihood that we're going to help that patient not only have a longer length of life, but a good, better quality of life. And both of these are very, very important. And protons are emerging rapidly as a significant tool in the arsenal that a radiation oncologist would have to employ for a patient with lung cancer. Radiation treatments for GI cancers, which have definitely been marginalized, both in pancreas cancer, gastric cancer, um, and now in rectal cancer, they've been marginalized because our toxicities and perceived toxicities are so great. If we show our colleagues that we're working really hard to lower those toxicities and educate the surgeons and the medical oncologists about what we can do with proton therapy, then we actually won't lose those patients to what I think are actually inferior treatments when you're just doing chemotherapy alone as, as adjuvant treatment. I think the three main technical advances in proton therapy that will have a positive impact for prostate cancer patients include the use of pencil beam scanning, which allows us to do intensely modulated proton therapy, which is an even more conformal and precise methodology for delivering proton therapy. Secondarily, the increased use of image-guided radiation therapy will also be an important aspect of proton therapy going forward. And the third aspect is the use of cone beam CT to obtain volumetric imaging prior to treatment. The reliability of the Proteus-1 um, and the applicability of proton therapy to more patients than historically uh, were recommended has been our biggest surprise. Having Proteus 1 on site and pencil beam scanning available for my patients means that complex tumors, retroperitoneal sarcomas, even things like locally advanced breast cancers and more disease sites that we see and have always had challenges in treating with, little, with limited toxicity are now being considered for proton therapy. So it really has changed our entire thinking. Well, I think a couple of surprises um, with Proteus 1 in particular. One was how fast we were able to get it installed and online. It surprised even us and IBA in how closely we were able to work with them and what a good relationship our team had with their team. It was, uh, that was a lot of fun. So ultimately, proton therapy will allow us to reduce the radiation dose to the different organs and really will reduce acute side effects during treatment patients may develop, uh, subacute toxicities that may occur shortly after finishing treatment, as well as with long-term complications. And as a result, patients will be able to tolerate treatment a lot better and uh, we will have longer living and happier survivors. Mm -hmm.